This is Lesson 24 in our Calculus 2 series, Polar Coordinates. Up until now, we've been plotting everything in the Cartesian coordinate system. That's the XY coordinate system. Now we introduce polar coordinates. It's another way to identify a point in the plane. So this point here, we were calling XY, and now we're going to call it R theta where r represents the distance from that point to the origin, and theta represents the angle made with the ray for that point and the polar axis, which is the positive x-axis. And so we can call this point by its x and y coordinates, or we can call it by its r and theta coordinates. Now, what's the relationship between xy coordinates and r theta coordinates? From the drawing here, we can see that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so sine of theta is y over r. And cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so cosine of theta is x over r. So if we multiply both of these equations by r, we have the equations y equals r sine theta and x equals r cosine theta. So now we have relationships between the x and y variables and the r theta variables. Notice that with these two equations, we could divide y over x. The r's will cancel and we'll get tan theta. And one more relationship, if we take a look at the right triangle that we have here, we can see that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So these are the equations relating Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. Now before we start plotting points, let's think about how we plot in rectangular coordinates. We're given an x and a y value, and so we move over x units and up y units. In polar coordinates, we're given an r value and a theta value, and what we want to do is start with the theta value, find that angle, and then go out r units in that direction. For example, 2 comma pi over 3, we would go up to pi over 3, and then we would go out 2 units in that direction, and that would be here. The scaling on these rays coming through the origin are showing the different angle values, the scaling you see here are the x and y coordinates, and from that we can find the radial values of each of these circles. For example, this is r equals 1, and this circle is r equals 2. So for 2 comma pi over 3, we go up to pi over 3, and then we go out 1, 2 units. Let's take a look at some more examples. Here we have 1 comma pi over 2. So we want to find the angle of pi over 2, so that's in this direction, and we want to go out one unit in that direction. And so our point is here. For 1 half 3 pi over 4, we want to find the angle 3 pi over 4, that's here, and in that direction we want to go out one half a unit, and that leaves us here. So this is 1 half 3 pi over 4. For 2 comma negative pi over 3, we want to find the angle negative pi over 3, so we're going down now pi over 3 units, so that's going to bring us here, and we want to go out 2 units in that direction. And so we're here, 2 comma negative pi over 3. Now we have negative 1 pi over 4, so we find the angle pi over 4, that's here, but instead of moving forward in this direction, we have an r value of negative 1. So we need to move backwards from that direction. So we find pi over 4, and then we move backwards now one unit from that direction. And so this is negative 1 pi over 4. Now notice that this point can also be represented in polar coordinates with theta equals 5 pi over 4, theta equals 5 pi over 4, and radius is equal to positive 1. So theta equals 5 pi over 4, and then radius is equal to positive 1. 
And so this shows us that polar representation of coordinates is not unique. In fact, we could add 2 pi to any of these polar coordinate representations and get another representation as well. So there's infinitely many ways that we can represent any point in polar coordinates. So for example, the point 2 comma negative pi over 3 can also be represented by using theta equals 2 pi over 3, which would be up in this direction, but then going backwards 2 units, so having a negative 2 for a radius. So negative 2 comma 2 pi over 3. We could also represent this point with theta equals 5 pi over 3 and r equals positive 2. So again, polar representation of points is not unique. Now let's convert to Cartesian coordinates. Here we have r theta is equal to 2 comma 2 pi over 3. Well, we know that x is equal to r cosine theta, and so that's going to be 2 cosine of 2 pi over 3. Now how do we evaluate cosine of 2 pi over 3? We find the reference angle for 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is here with a reference angle of pi over 3, and this is in quadrant 2. All students take calculus. Cosine is negative here. So this is going to be negative cosine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is the reference angle, and the negative comes from quadrant 2 for cosine. So we have 2 times negative cosine of pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, so this is 2 times negative 1 half. And so that's negative 1. So x is equal to negative 1 if we're going from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Now let's find the y value. y is equal to r sine theta. So we take our r of 2 and now sine of 2 pi over 3. Same idea going on here, except now sine is positive in quadrant 2. So this is going to be 2 times positive sine of pi over 3. Again, that's the reference angle, and positive comes from quadrant 2 with sine values. And so that's 2 times radical 3 over 2, or radical 3. And so the xy coordinates for this point are written as negative 1 comma radical 3. And now just to check, let's plot this point in polar coordinates and also in Cartesian coordinates on the same plane to see that we end up in about the same spot. So 2, 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 is in this direction and we're moving out two units, so let's say there's two units there, that would get us approximately here, two units in that direction, so we're here. And now negative one, radical three. So here's one unit, here's negative one, here's negative two. So yes, this does look like it could be negative one, radical three. Remember that radical three is less than radical four, and radical 4 is 2. So yes, this looks like we're in the right spot. Again, let's convert to Cartesian coordinates. We're given r theta is equal to negative 1, negative pi over 2. So here we have x is equal to negative 1 times cosine of negative pi over 2. Cosine of negative pi over 2 is 0, so we have 0 for our x coordinate. Our y coordinate is r sine theta, so that's negative 1 sine of negative pi over 2. Think about your sine graph, sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1, so here we have a positive 1. So our x, y coordinates are then 0 comma 1. Now let's plot this. An angle of negative pi over 2 would be going down this way but we want to move backward one unit. 
So we're facing the direction negative pi over 2, and then we're going to go backwards one unit. And so we're going to end up here. And that is the point 0, 1 in x, y terms. Now let's take a look at this example. For x, y equals negative 1, comma, negative radical 3, we're asked to find two polar representations of this point. We want to find r theta with r positive and theta between 0 and 2 pi, and we want to find r theta with r negative and theta between 0 and 2 pi. So remember the relationship that we have between r theta, x, and y. Now we're given x and y, and we want to find r and theta. So the best place to start would be by using the tan theta equals y over x equation. So we're going to take our y divided by our x, and that gives us radical 3. And so tan of theta is equal to radical 3, and we're looking for theta values between 0 and 2 pi. So that gives us theta equals pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So how did we get those values? Remember that theta equals pi over 3 is one that we memorized from the common first quadrant angles. And then we want to see if there are any other values for theta in this interval for which tan theta is equal to radical 3. And so we think about our four quadrants with a pi over 3 reference angle. We know that in quadrants 1 and 3, tangent is positive. All students take calculus, so quadrants 1 and 3. So here's our angle of pi over 3, and this one is then going to be 4 pi over 3. And so these are our two solutions in this interval, 0 to 2 pi. We also need to find r for this point, and we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So r squared is equal to 4, and that says r is equal to positive or negative 2. Now remember what we're looking for here. We're looking for an r theta representation, one with r positive and one with r negative. So how do we know which r value corresponds to each of these theta values? Well, let's take a look at what quadrant our point is in. We know that our given point in xy coordinates, negative 1, negative radical 3, is going to be in quadrant 3. So that means for theta equals pi over 3, we're going to need a negative r value to end up in quadrant 3. So that has to be negative 2 comma pi over 3. Similarly, for theta equals 4 pi over 3, that's in this direction, we need a positive r value. So we're going to have 2 comma 4 pi over 3. And those are the two polar representations that we were looking for. And with this, we'll conclude our lesson on polar coordinates.